And just like that, we're live. Morning thoughts, morning thoughts, morning thoughts. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up, shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to Mr. Art Kaldan. Shout out to Great Goodies. Shout out to whoever else is coming in next. Shout out to the entrepreneurs, stay-at-home moms and pops, retirees, Miss Goldie Robinson. Shout out to every single clean-hearted, good-hearted person who wants good for others as much as you want good for yourself. Whatever your job description is out there, law enforcement personnel, medical field personnel, military personnel, construction workers, engineers, heavy equipment operators, AC techs. Big up to my AC brethren. Um, we need you because Florida is hot. right? Well, my part of Florida is hot right now. If you don't have an AC, you're probably hurting because we're back up in the high 80s and in the 90s on some days already. It's going to be a hot summer. But, you know, we live for it, and that's what we're here for. So give thanks in all aspects of life. Big up to everybody tuning in, and thank you for being here this morning. So let me run down the list right now then. Miss Goldie Robinson, shout out to Mr. Article Dan for being the first one in this morning. Miss Goldie Robinson is right there. Great Goodies was second. Karen Notice is in the building with us. Charma D. Star, haven't seen you in a while. Hope all is well. Veronica Gale, Marilyn Grant. Missy Bram Bram is in the building. Missy says, up this. Big up yourself, says Sharon Spence is here. Kaz Robinson is in the building this morning. Michelle Taylor is here. Dorothy T, BM, Roxy 21, Asarin Odetta, Grace James is here this morning. Missy Bram Bram says, blessing my SoFlo family. Five Field 63 is in the building this morning, all the way from England. Bigging up everybody. Big up yourself and big up our British family all the way across the pond. King Biggs is in the building. Audrey Wright says, morning fam and present teacher. Julie Tapper is in the building with us this morning as well. British Jamaican girl is here. Audrey Wright says, hit the thumbs up button as you enter the live, please. And thank you. Mervyn the Point Jamaica Kerr is in the building. OG876. I like that name. OG876. That sounds like it could be a clothing brand. Hmm. OG876. Think about that. OG876. Sound like it could be a clothing brand. Let, let your mind wander with the ideas, right? Representing like uh, culture from, you know, back in the day all the way up till now. OG stuff. Original gangster stuff. OG clothing. OG876. Anyway, blessings. Big up yourself and thank you for being here. Jamaica from the outside is in the building this morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, Marilyn Grant, five field six three. Uh, Soflo, you sound much better today. Yeah, but me still not. I could tell it's not my voice. You, I feel like I have somebody else's voice echoing inside of my neck, head, ear, and space. But me, I work with it. Um, me, I work with it, and I'm not complaining because the most important thing is I don't have any problems swallowing. I don't have any swollen lymph nodes. You know, with them kind of something they mean already, right? I'm feeling good, just the voice isn't back yet, and I'm still coughing a lot. So we're slowly getting over whatever this is. And again, I have my eucalyptus tea right here, along with some ginger crush up in it, and we're working on it that way. Dion McFarlane is with us this morning. Says, good morning, SoFlo and the family. Just came back from Jamaica. Dion McFarlane, how was Jamaica for you, my friend? Dorothy T says, enjoy the sun. We getting snow tomorrow. <laughs> Ooh, we getting snow tomorrow. No, we getting sunshine today and tomorrow. We might get a lick of rain. How was the how was Jamaica for you? Anytime anybody said they just came back from Jamaica, I want to know. Very, very good. Dion says it's very good. Dion McFarlane. Is it Dion? Dion, right? Yeah. Country girl. Country girl said good morning. All give thanks for another blessed day. Amen. Onika St. John is in the building. Kai Tai Jai Empress. Wayne Core, right? That's up. Yes, very good. All right. Uh, what part did you go to? One more question. I'm mean, not gonna dig too much into your business, but what what part did you go to? Jury duty today. I hope I don't get picked for the Trump case. Onika says, <laughs> "Well, Onika, you know how to get out of it." Well, we're not gonna tell you that not to do that. Do your civic duty. 
I won't tell you how to get out of it. It's not okay. What part of Jamaica did you go to, um, Dion? Clarendon, Manchester, Kingston, St. Elizabeth, St. Anne, you don't know? Let me take a sip of this tea. We have a lot to talk about this morning. Should be pretty festive. Mm. Ochi. Oh. Oh, you went to the other Jamaica. <laughs> Yo, I hear people say, may I fly out? <laughs> people say, may I fly out of Jamaica, go to Ochi. I'm flying out of Jamaica to Ochi, as if Ochi is somewhere completely different. <laughs> now nah, tell her. Oh, we want to listen. <laughs> All right, so anyway, listen, here's our topics this morning, right? Uh, a mother struggles with her bisexual sons. And this is a story out of Jamaica that I meant to cover before, and it slipped me, and I just found it back this morning. I have a book where I put down my topics in, and sometimes some of the topics them slip me, or they just don't feel like it was the right time to discuss certain things. So... A mother, a mother struggles with her bisexual sons, meaning she have multiple sons who are bisexual. This Jamaica, uh, um, you know, upside down, everything different now. That's one. Florida, Florida, the state of Florida has new laws in place. We're going to talk about those new laws because I live here and some people say, why are you not chat about which part you live? So since I live here and a lot of Jamaicans live here, a lot of Caribbean people live here, we're going to talk about the new laws that govern the state of Florida. Why I'm talking about this? Because yesterday uh, I put up a picture of me on the beach on Facebook, um, Instagram, and I asked people, I said, what are the drawbacks for you why you would never live in the state of Florida? Uh, most people said crocodiles or alligators or um, the bugs and the lizards. And, you know, but there were a lot of people who said the politics. The your governor and the holy par rednecks and the racism, right? And I was saying to them that the rednecks don't bother you. Matter of fact, the rednecks here in Florida, they kind of like look out for you and theirs at the same time. You know what I mean? It, it, it ain't like the traditional redneck that you would think from back in the day. Things have really changed. Things have really changed. Um, we are a mixed up melting pot here in Florida. It's weird. And people have their weird ways on both sides of the spectrum. But it, I can't explain it to you. You'd have to come here, come live it a little bit and see it. Right? My, my kids go to school. So my kids have friends who are who consider themselves rednecks. And they drive big trucks come school with mud slinging tires and rebel flag hanging off the back and these kind of things. And then they stay close to them. And they, they're, they're like boys that are men. They're into like jacking up their truck and going under it and doing all the stuff. Them change them own tire, change their own oil. They're, they're like money men at, at, at boy age. You know what I mean? And, and that's what it is to them to be redneck. It's like they rig everything and fix everything kind of thing. I don't know. But the governor part of it is what I really wanted to explain to you. Somebody said, I know you're not a Trump supporter and I know you're not a Republican. So it must be hell for you living in Florida. And I try to explain to people that because I might not want a Republican president does not mean I might not want a Republican governor. This is the same principle I was trying to explain to my Jamaican people that it's OK to flip sides. One election, I'm voting JLP. Next election, I'm voting PNP. It depends on where my interest lies and who is loyal to the cause of the people or the stuff that benefits me and my family. Two laws went into place in Florida that we're going to talk about shortly. Uh, there is Rastafari is getting some kind of retribution, and we're going to talk about that. This is kind of like a payback for what Sir Bustamante did to them. Um, in the Coral Garden Massacre, if y'all don't know about that. But we'll get into that in a minute. And the Haitian children, we're going to do an update to the Haitian children who recently were brought into Jamaica uh, for safekeepings out of Haiti because Haiti is volatile right now. 
and um, herbalist. There's an herbalist out there who is giving, who is said to be giving short men length. There's an herbalist out there who is said to be giving short men length. So if you are a short man, <laughs> you want to find out about this herbalist so you can get you a piece of length, then cock your ears that well. No, no, cock your ears, no, cock nothing. Um, nothing. Take that back. Uh, put your ear over here this way. <laughs> yeah, put it. Put your ear over here this way. All right. We're gonna get this is how we're getting into this morning. I feel like I feel I feel frivolous. So I feel to start out with the herbalist. <laughs> so we're gonna start out right now with the herbalist and then we'll take it from there. All right. I live deep in Ochi and that lifestyle there. That's the lifestyle there. I support Trump over Biden. God is God. Man says, I don't know why some Jamaican people always come afar and come jump on Democrat bandwagon. I saw. Uh Audrey Wright says, which part of my <laughs> and, which part of my which part of my and the length? Let's get into it. Well I know. Let me sip that tea a little bit because I don't want to start coughing on y'all. Uh, and if y'all understand, the more I talk is the more I cough. Right. So may I try, you know, keep the throat. All right. So here here. Here here it goes. For men who are not satisfied with their size of their manhood. Kingston-based herbalist Jason Brown, the operator of Big Man Herbals, write it down, Big Man Herbals, believes that one of his concoctions, it's called the 12-inch syrup, mm -hmm, is already putting a pep in the step of several men island-wide. Now, in about six months now, it's about six months now I've been selling it, you know, and may I tell you, sir, it has sell like hot bread, you know, is what uh, Jason said, whose business is primarily online. So you can look him up online. There is no myth to saying that we are what we eat and drink. And the same way that we have food that make you put on weight or on other parts of your body is the same way that you have roots drinks that grows and adds length to the little snapper popper down there, uh, the tealy. Some of the ingredients is bush that you pass on the sidewalk or you chop out of your backyard and throw it away, is what he's saying. Now, according to the herbalist who specializes in making male enhancement products, and he's been doing this for years, and he has a very good reputation because a lot of people still keep on going back to him and have been going to him for years. He has been getting encouragement about the 12-inch syrup. It has gone bad. He has been getting encouragement to whip up a remedy for the men who suffer from shortcomings and erectile dysfunction. It's nothing to laugh about because, you know, erectile dysfunction is a serious thing. I uh, put it this way. I remember a young guy was complaining about something and an older man said, Cha, you don't have no problem yet. You know, it's one of them, or well, I believe he was Trini. And he said, you, you don't have no problem. There ain't no problem. And I tell you when you have a problem. And he said, when she take it, when she take off all she clothes and lay down. And she said, give me some and bring some and you can't bring nothing. That is when you have a problem. And you know, I was younger at the time and I, I laughed, but I didn't laugh. But now that I'm older, I, I really laugh because it really makes sense now. Yeah, I can't, you know, you're a man and it, this could affect you all kinds of ways, psychologically, everything. Your good, good woman lay down there, you know, you know, whole day you did there in your mind, a reverse and forward, how you're going to deal with the thing and you know, which angle I should attack from. And that's how we plan sometime, you know. And then when time, the moment of revelation come, you know, you alone show up because the boy not show up with you. And you're there just dangling, dingling, and can't do nothing. That, that must be a frightening thing, right? Right. And it's a big problem for a lot of people. See, the man said, me use aloe vera, me use maca root, and me use some other secret ingredients so I can't really tell them about. And me give one of my brethren them to test it. And in about four days, him come back and him tell me, say, him thing get stronger, but him surprised the way how it get longer said Mr. Brown. 
you don't know, you know, he's a man, so I'm not going to tell him to take a picture and come show it to me or nothing like that. But I ask a female to look on a before and an after picture of it, and she tell me, say, the man thing, boy, grow big, big now. Me already well blessed, you know, in that area, but me try, me try the thing too for myself. And me see the results, so I start promoting it on my business page. At first, people did hesitate. They never believe. But now, I want to make best seller them. A consumer of the product who lives in Portland told the Jamaica star that days after he began taking the syrup, he regained his confidence. The man said, I'm not too quick to believe things in about right after COVID, but it get a stroke. And for some reason, down there, Boy, I never did I work properly still. So my wife never made me feel bad or nothing, but me know say other man, me suppose to please her, said the rejuvenated husband. Me say me take the syrup, you know. And me not go tell you say me thing get bigger or nothing like that. But the kind of hard way it get hard, you see. When me realize the way me happy, me drink more than was required. And me I tell you say, you know. I turn up for about one day trade, you know. It worked, man. And my wife happy, you know. My wife happy. Yeah, she happy. Mr. Brown said that the syrup is taken via two teaspoons after a meal. And he said that it is not only a sexual booster. It can also be a supplement to boost. And every herb will come from the earth is a medicine. In country, a country we grow, you know. And when me smaller, my grandparents, them never used to take me go to no doctor unless it's a vaccination me I get or something like that because there was a remedy for everything in the bush, including colds and flus and all these other things, said Mr. Brown. So everything we do is natural, right? But me focus mostly on men's product because a lot of times the men them, them feel ashamed to go to the doctor and talk about certain things we are going with them, right? So, that is the story of the herbalist in Jamaica who operates online. I'm just reaching out and giving you know, a um, solution uh, to your problems if you're having that problem. Or if you're just looking for an enhancement or you're looking to try something that is completely natural, you know, um, here is an avenue. Uh, herbalist Jason Brown operates off operator of Big Man Herbals. You can go online and look up Big Man Herbals. And on Big Man Herbals site, you will see his different concoctions for different reasons. You know, you can go try out the 12-inch syrup and see. <laughs> Imagine your, your wife going to the bathroom and see the 12-inch syrup in, her, in her the cabinet. The way I do with this. <laughs> well, on there. I'll say this. I'm skeptical myself. I don't know um, it's, if it's 100% natural. I might give it a try. I might be able to give it a try and then come back and give a feedback. But I can tell you this. There was an herb I got from a Trini brethren. I took me telling about this already. It's Bob Wandy. A herb from a Trini brethren. It's supposed to make you longer, bigger, stronger, all these other things. I don't know if it make me longer, strong, or nothing like that. But the stronger part, yeah, it, it, it actually got to the point where I tried some and it me never feel nothing. The same thing me do with the ecstasy pill when I'm telling about. I tried a little bit because he warned me and he said, watch, if you take too much of this, they're going to have to take you to the hospital. So I said, you know, nobody have to carry me go to the hospital. I said, I'm going to have to cut the vein in or something to release the blood. If you take too much, he said, don't listen to me. Don't take more than what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, the, uh, it's a serious warning again. You don't take more than what I'm telling you. So I'm take it real serious, right? So I was afraid to even take the amount that he told me. So I'm take a little bit first. My business line up, you know. Somebody is coming over. Lashings me, I put on. So I'm take a little bit first. Didn't feel nothing. Time is getting closer. Take a little bit more. One piece of something happened to me. Um, who heard the story already hear it. But upon the counter, 
me put my things. And you know the you know the pin roller that you use like if you're baking and you roll out the door. Yeah, upon the counter me put my hood and, and have the pin <laughs> have the pin roller and roll I roll my body. Cause it, it wouldn't go nowhere. And all me I do and I wasn't thinking about it yet. So I start get power based on what he told me that they're gonna have to cut it down. So I try to do everything with it to make it go away. It now go away. And the kind of stand up where it stand up was a vicious kind of stand up. So I could swear by stuff like that. If I've taken it before, I'm getting that kind of reaction there. Some of these things, they might not make you longer. Honestly, I don't think there's anything out there that can make you longer per se. Maybe there's things that can give you more girth as a man. And maybe there are things that can, for, well, me know for sure. There are things that can firm up your erection, right? That's all. But uh, at, at the end of the day, listen, what God gave you is what you're gonna. <laughs> what what God gave you is what you're gonna have to work with, my friend. I said this before. I'll say it again. There's something out there named compatibility. You will hear some ladies say, "Listen, me don't want nothing. Come rub out my belly button, man. Bust up my cervix and." chip out my lining and damage me. Me don't want none of that. I, I am good with normal. And when you ask them what normal is, it's something even smaller than where you're working with. Jamaican men have this obsession, like, you know, and their, their favorite number to start out with is 12 inches. No, 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 <laughs> no 12 inch, but 12 inches. Yeah, most of these women ain't looking for no damn 12 inches. And, and man who have 12 inches and I swing it, I swing it like a construction work him do. Yeah, and she a couple and say no little like him don't know how to caress and how to use it properly. And I be your pain and agony. Although you have some women who say, I pain me up, agony me up. Yeah, bust out my belly bottom. Mm -hmm. Broke me up. They, they've called it here before and told us that. So it's a matter of compatibility. It's who you have, right? <laughs> it's who you choose. If you're choosing somebody who like to be wrecked and broken into pieces and you don't have the tool to do it, then, you know, um, it, it, you have to go choose somebody else. Let, leave that for somebody else who has the tool to do what is required, the, the work that's required over there. And go find you somebody who they're good with what you have. Yeah, that's my advice to you. But if you want to try the thing, go try the thing. It's called 12 inch syrup. Look up Mr. Um, Jason Brown, the herbalist. Um, operators, big man herbals on line. All right, <laughs> live, live, live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Morning. How are you? I'm good, brother. How are you doing this morning? I'm all right. All right. Talk to it up. So, so Flo, why you say you have to work with what God gives you? Yes, you have to work with what God gives you. What else you have to do? <laughs> no, but you say God help those who try to help them. Yeah, that too. That too. But. What? Oh, well, <laughs> how are you gonna help yourself? I haven't found a tree. You're beating a tree. Oh, tree. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I heard that one before. Beat the pa papa tree are. I'm say pull it every day for a, a good couple of minutes. Me see an African brother do a video and him say you must warm a towel in warm water and uh, every time you take a shower, wrap the towel around it. And dry it and pull it <laughs> for about five minutes in all directions and these things. And you do that daily. I don't <laughs> listen. I, I just think you have to work with what you have here, man. I reached the age now where I probably tried everything there is to try. If you see if I could I get a longer, bigger one and it no night work. I just let me have with me have what God give me. I'm <laughs> me just work with what God give me. So I pass that I on. I think I'm the one where you say we pull it every day. Mm -hmm. it may work based on the fact that because you know some people always sit on up there and in a them pants. <laughs> my, my, my cousin used to pull him something from him at liquor boy mm -hmm. all the while. <laughs> so maybe that one work. Maybe that one. Maybe work. that one that work. Yeah, man. Why? Well, good luck to the man them who extra shot here. So, um, it is what it is. You know, God, we, we said God make no mistakes, right? But, but the, the shot of the bullet, no fault, I go. Rotten. See that? <laughs> 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 All right, 
Alright, big up yourself. <laughs> Man, as I respect that. <laughs> the ones in the shot and the bullet and the fast I go. I don't know if she want fast though. <laughs> or how fast she want it. <laughs> it might go too fast. Well, you know what? You work in, I work in with what God give me. I don't, let's do <laughs> Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. <laughs> Uh, good morning. <laughs> week, week. Anyways, <laughs> the Papa Tree thing didn't work. I don't think that, that don't work. It don't work. We are the... tell you my experience. <laughs> oh, yes, I am true. I mean, always, you, you know, a uh, Jamaican man just get this thing. Just to just ram out girl wall and this and that. Just hey, so. Bend every up song we come out of Jamaica I be a big old wall and who have a tighty soul. Hey. Every Jamaican woman for her to have a tighty soul. Mm-hmm. But anyways, <laughs> long story short. You see it. <clears throat> you, have a, you have a thing on your maxes, you see me? Hey. I may tell you about experience or something will happen for me. No? I don't know about nobody else. But you have a thing on your maxes. You have a cream and you have a pill. Mm-hmm. See? Maxes. Yeah, mm. Maxis. You have a cream and you have a pill. With that, you can't drink no soda. You can't drink no food with grease. You can't eat none of them sitting there. Like, you, you have to go to it basically natural, like, mm-hmm. like, and the greens and them something and they work. I mean, I tell you like that. No homophobia. I get three inch and maybe half inch thicker. I may mean, tell you. Half a problem. Half a Maxis. Half a Maxis, yeah. Some, somebody it, write it, this dog now, you know. Uh, when no, me a Maxis. Like, Yo, when I tell me I'll go on uh, hotel, go work in a friggin um pensive here, and I'm sitting. You know, say I pay a Russian day over um sitting there. But then call it again, Harrisburg, this sir. Yeah. You know me in the kitchen, man. Oh my God, man, bingo! <laughs> I'm gonna make sure, yo, me make sure I got, me make sure I got work at the time, cause I mean, I just three man alone working there, otherwise I pay a girl. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make sure going at that with my thing, half, <laughs> half right. I mean, I tell you, what I tell man before me left a, a clad, a clad some girl in that, you see? <laughs> yeah, man. I'm not something see, there. I tell you that. If you, if yeah, me I tell you, I swear to you, try. You are going to come back and tell me, you know. Wait, if no, you wait, ever wait. try for real, yeah. it, it need a maxes, man. It give you extra length. The longer you take a pill, yeah. the longer you use the pill, the longer you grow. But then say, if, 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 if they span how long you want, you have to make sure so you eat things that give you blood, that give you back blood in your body and them things. In natural? Yeah, 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 in natural. Africa. So, uh, I think it come from uh, Nairobi. Right. All right, sir. All right. Yeah, man. But you can't eat no greasy food. You can't drink no soda and then sitting there. You have to go eat like natural good free. food. Yeah, you have to. We then call it again. You have to drink pure water, pure water. And after the first week, you take a pill. Mm. Then tell you, say, you have to go jerk up twice a day for three days. <laughs> <laughs> I, I basically stretch out church yourself. <laughs> Yo, I tell you that. One time, if it could have come like, say, I drop it in, I drop out. And now, I tell you, I fire me, I fire over my head up. I tell you, I fire over my head up, brother. Yo. Really, Yo. Me <laughs> know, me know say me a TMI, but me I tell you, you know sometimes you you, you at work and your body just tired and sitting, and it, it, it thing just come out and just lay down just so. Right now I in I hear and over face me up and <laughs> from back, wicked wicked. Yeah, I'm pushing wing. Yeah man, pushing wing 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 wing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. Max is on the cream. Max is. Yeah. All right. My lad. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> hey. <laughs> if you want to when you work and your body tired, I just this. So for the woman, them to understand. <laughs> when you work and your body just tired out, you know, and you, you've been doing too much, going, not getting enough sleep, not eat properly. And so when you bust off and it just goes so tip. And then just roll out. <laughs> the man Safima bust like Peshengweng. Woof over. So. <laughs> All right, sir. So, live on the air with Soflo. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Hold on. Let me take care. 
I'm a chum who want you to be with yourself online. I got people here. <laughs> I'm a chum who want you to be with yourself. It's Uno. <laughs> so, Flo, you yeah. get too much trouble here. Brother, I Uno, you know, I don't mean it. Hey, me just uh, introduce you know, for when me I tell, hey, uh, you know, say, me is a walking billboard for you. Uh, <laughs> Everywhere I'm mm. going, I'm like, yo, you guys need to listen to this guy, eh? I used to listen, <laughs> I'm in Canada, I used to listen to 98.1. See it. <laughs> uh, radio station. I'm a real life, I said, I'm biased. But, <laughs> I saw. I'm, I'm from the start, listen to you know, the first thing they turned me off still was the tattoo them. Come and come like your grandmother. Oh. I wait you do to yourself. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? My granny said, then you really sit down there and make somebody do that to you. It's what you do to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right, you so. know what you do though? I'm why your audience them hear this yeah. loud and clear, eh? See it. But they are every day I hesitate, you know, and the other day you just a beat on a beat on. I'm just buy one ticket and say, yo, I Jamaica me ago. Mm. <laughs> so, just say, you know what? Two weeks, even if a week or two weeks me ago, because I need to do some construction, but me I say, me do you wait till me reach certain fundings and this and that. And me I say, where you hesitate for? So you buy your ticket? Um, me just so uh, yes, sir, right now, when we finish talk to you and you're done the show, mm -hmm. I'm gonna deposit the money in my sister account so she can buy the ticket. Okay, so you're going and not even say a word within a day or two. My god, all right, <laughs> don't yeah, man. It, the, this whole planting, planting, you know, if we if we stay around planning, but we don't have enough money and I'm waiting for the perfect time. Life is short, my brother, and we don't really know when is when, you know. So we just have to live it up as we get it. So if you can afford to get your ticket and some basic survival needs, go ahead and treat yourself, yes? It, it, it will prepare you better for the next trip to come again. I saw people talk themselves out of going, and before them know it, they look at their watch and the clock and the calendar, and it's like, whoa, it's been five years. It's been ten years. You know? Just go. And for me, to be honest, mm -hmm. It's been like 12 years. Rotted. You're you going okay. to New Jamaica, man. <laughs> me all, me all <laughs> send you to school, make them graduate, and all them things there. You're in Jamaica, you're... right now, one youth in the military. Mm -hmm. I'm just link him and say, yo, now watch no name of my soon forward. They must say, your father, seriously? Jaja, you know when me wait for you? <laughs> yeah, you you are you are go to a whole new Jamaica, my friend. If twelve years, I know, I know. Yeah. But my foot was always on the ground still. See, yeah, man. But it's nothing you know? like actually having the foot on the ground. Trust me when me tell you. Literally, yeah. yeah I, I go back every year. One time I miss, uh, and it took me two years to go back. And when I went back in the two years, I'm driving a certain route, and who I was with said. Where are you going to wear the fuck? Come with a way here. I mean, I said, there is no other way. And they're like, no, nah, man, come, show you the way. Go, go down, so. And I'm like, floating on a new highway. You know, Jamaica is changing so rapidly that 12 years, you, you're going back. To, you, you have a surprise. But it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And the good thing is, and another heads up, I think it was you that said, um, I sent Thomas my come from, right? I mean, hear them talk, say, yo, you can't buy no land in a St. Thomas, you know? Yeah, because real estate is booming like that. And who not grab mm -hmm. land and thief land, and who not thief land and sell land. And, yeah. Um, and and that's why my brother said, yo, come start the house from the land where you have. Mm -hmm. Before, mm -hmm. you know, we are going in a problem. Do something with it. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right, fam. All right, brother. Respect. Man is here. And be of yourself. May I be here from now on? Me, <laughs> me done. <laughs> Later. Right. Respect, Respect. Fam. <laughs> I, uh, wait there. Uh, Jeff says, uh, six years now, me not go back, but this year, definitely. Yeah, Jeff, just buy a ticket and go, fam. Don't, don't be sitting around planning too much and waiting, you know? Uh, I know it's important to plan. But sometimes you plan and plan yourself out of stuff. Well, me, I forgot to do this first. And then maybe I need to wait until this done. And maybe I need to... Yo, big up to the people them who take all them rent money and go to Jamaica. When them come back, eviction notice upon them door. Big... 
<laughs> Big up to them people that call. Here what? <laughs> you still gonna have to find the money to pay the rent anyways, right? The rent just late. You're not come back come homeless. So big up to them. And people do do that. Believe me. Yeah, pack a barrel, get some nice things. Them gone. When you see them at Jamaica, the nicest set of people, them oh, them are living life like them hit the lotto of foreign. When them come back up here, I creep them have to creep on tiptoe go in. Big pink paper up on them front door. You stay there. Live on the air with so flow. Good morning. Boy, no son. I want me to hit me, son. Look here. I'm having a ball and I want you to keep with it. I'm at work and I'm having a good vibe. I'm getting some kicks. People are taking me a mad from the Bluetooth in every year. But listen to me now. Thank you for the, I'm bringing the story of the other day. Mm -hmm. The UK one, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for breaking it down and coming out of time. That's why I'm a PA. All right, you tell me love you. <laughs> I appreciate you and thank but you. Yes, you're welcome. But anyhow, the brother mm -hmm. to build up the other, mm -hmm. you bring something from Jamaica. Say if I work, no, make it work. Me not here down Africa. Bring it once say that work. But listen to me, you say this is from the island of spring, what everybody wants. The man saying thing work, mm -hmm. you go go try it. Me go try it. Me go try it. No, not you. The other man, when the man come tell about Maxi, mm -hmm. some English name. Mm -hmm. Look here, uh, the man saying me thing in a Jamaica need that work. Tell so, uh, the man saying him to go go try that. But well, no, you. Me, me tell him. So see, go go try see, that. That make a Jamaica. Me get it. Me get it. Uh, anything yeah, yeah, you yeah. say make a Jamaica is one hundred percent real, not ninety nine point nine nine percent real. One hundred percent so. Oh no, go go try. Come meet and go go try. Mo I see sitting for me. Can go to later. We love you. Later. Mind it now. Mind. Mind a little something that stretch out and look like man pigs. <laughs> but yeah, brand Jamaica to the world. I get it. I get it. So yeah, one more time. His name is Jason Brown. He's an herbalist. And he you can find him online. And if you look at Big Man Herbals is where you will find him. So go up on Big Man Herbals and you can look and see what concoctions he has. I'm sure to describe what is for what. And you can take it from there. I'm definitely going to be looking him up. Um, let me not even just talk. Let me write down because no I hear what my wife I going to say after this. I try a thing. I see. Wow, go on. You know, first lady, I feel approved, I guess. Yeah. All right. On to our next topic now. Uh, here we are. Let's talk about this. This one, this one buff bothered me for quite some time. A mother struggles with her bisexual sons. I saw her sons and I said, This is multiple. A Kingston woman bared her soul in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court yesterday as she revealed that her challenge in dealing with the fact that uh, her two sons are bisexual. Jamaican people have no behavior. Somebody already left one comment where say said, one mother and two swim around. <laughs> ah, the emotional mother made the revelation after her 18-year-old son was brought before the courts for robbery with aggravation. She said, quote-unquote, I have two sons, and they are both bisexuals, Your Honor. And I have a bigger son, and he is bisexual as well. And it's hard for me as a mother to deal with that, to cope with it. The court heard that her teenage son, a cross-dresser, allegedly robbed a man in the New Kingston Business District. It is alleged that on January 2nd, the complainant was driving along Ripon Road when later Grenada Crescent in New Kingston seeking services from prostitutes in the area. Because this is an area where certain things go on. And it looked like our son over there selling. Or he is one of those who dress up and pretend and then rob the people them. Right. It is further alleged that a group of cross-dressers robbed the complainant of 27,000 Jamaican dollars and 50,000 US dollars 
approximately 7.8 million Jamaican dollars. And they took an Alcatel cell phone and they took the bank card away from him as well. 50,000 US dollars in a one lick, along with 27,000 Jamaican dollars. The teen was later identified as one of the cross-dressers and was subsequently arrested and charged with robbery, with aggravation. However, he has pleaded not guilty to the charges. Now, on a previous court hearing, prosecutors were informed by the mother that she was willing to have her son reside with her should he be offered bail. But her relatives are not so accepting of her son's sexual orientation. The people in the community are saying that the youth need a clean up. I mean, even if you're going to be the way you are, at least go on like your man. Right? Them now want to see you come outside in a dress and make up on your face and the whole of we know you as JJ from your little and your boy picnic and these things. This call is coming um, non stop. Make a technical here, I see. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Morning, brother. Line hot this Ma morning. Boy, e. What go on? <laughs> <laughs> what go on? <laughs> Yo, me just a finish up my shit for me tune in. I hear you talk. You know, the vibes hot, dog. E. E. <laughs> yeah. What so, That website, that, what that website the name again? E. From Jamaica. Big Man Herbals. Boy, me I try to out in a brother. Three separate words. Me I try to out Me I go support Yo, him thing. I see what I go on. Last time, me look for my wife and me tell her, I say, boy, I'm going to find some other means to try to keep up with her. And she'll get up in her prime, you know, brother. Yeah, yeah. Is it? And she'll rough you up. <laughs> because we know if we can't she'll keep up. You know, and you look a young 19, 20 year old. You're pretty hard. You see that? Hey, she'll rough you up. <laughs> Yo. I try it out, man. What? Yeah. yeah. I get all of me around two other and can't go to the gym for booze. I tell the stars to run. So, yo. Aye. Any other means. Aye. And a natural thing. Natural thing. Yeah. Big man but, herbals. One, one other thing more and touch point still real quick. Yeah. It is um the same size and thing where the topic depends. Mm -hmm. What a lot of women understand is that you say attraction. Mm -hmm. Attraction is like a, another type of joke to you know, brother. Mm -hmm. Because a man might be married, still love his wife and everything. Mm -hmm. Why well, you know as some you can say, boy, I want pom pom kill body, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> one one hand kill cock. <laughs> yeah. So it was still we're, loving we're wife and chickens. everything. Still I work for him wife. Mm -hmm. But if we see another woman out there where him strongly attracted to my youth and him, him find say him erect harder for that woman there, isn't it as a brother? There are different levels of it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. there are. So, there are. So it it all cut adrenaline, you know. Yes, we have adrenaline. Mm -hmm. if, if Blood pump, pumping hard flow everywhere. You yes, yeah. Yeah. So at that another all that woman need to understand. So when them criticize a man and say, Oh boy, you would can't turn up all of that, that not means that the man important. Yeah. If I'm important to you. Yeah. Because I'm not attracted. The attraction is not strong enough. You see me, me I say, brother? You may tell so, a story before a, a real life the woman story. Woman need to understand that. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's why a lot of women might say, Oh, her husband, no, nah, do him for do a yard. But then she has him probably important, but you still if she has him a fire live runs out of the road, isn't it? True. True, true. Yeah, so them need to understand that. But I don't know if you touch a little joke. They they look a store where you tell about the pill where you take where you, you expect a little cat over. And yeah, and a pill is a, is a is a tree bark. Tree in bark. The, yeah, in the Bob one day. As a tree bark and you soak it in some rum and the Trinity Bridging tell me said don't take more than the <laughs> cock full. And it yeah. take off the top of the buckle and take that amount and that alone. And we did free it. So I take half of it and never feel nothing. And I take a next half. And then I sit yeah. the up and couldn't go nowhere. And it's stiff up on me. And boy, I'm afraid. I catch me frightened. So, so yeah. Uh, uh, after she, she left that working, or uh, uh, what? Brother, it turn up before she come. And when she come, me <laughs> do what me I do. And she left and it still turn up. Can we think anything after she left it? It kick in, is it me? No, it kick in before she reached. When Red Bull is a carry swing, you know, me I go high school, you know. Yeah. I say, oh, Red Bull give you wings. <laughs> See me I say? Yo, this brother, we got to trap me, dog. Yeah. And this brother had the long jump. A two Red Bull man takes him as a win, long jump. You know? That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, after <laughs> trap me, the Red Bull kick in. 
Yo, yo, I went and chat me, man. Red Bull kicking. Yo, the man didn't cheat, try and go half the pit. <laughs> I just went trap meat done. Red Bull kicking and then go do a child jump. I done the man done the pit, brother. Rotten. You see me, I say? Yeah, now Red Bull something that me not, me not tell nobody if you go drink it. Come, me try yeah, one. So. If you're caffeine sensitive, me try one. And me swear to me that I have a heart attack. Yeah. Yeah, so. Now only if I'm dead from that, too. Yeah, me not, me not, you know them something there. That's why I'm very sensitive. That's why I'm here ask if it's natural herbal thing. Come, me not, you yeah. know, nothing where. I go have my heart a beat out of my chest and next thing me dead pump pum pum. Me kill over dead pump pum pum. No, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, can't man, kill man, it man, to man. no brother. Me kill everybody is there try, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I we have to remember yeah. so we can't kill it too, you know. Cause me watch yeah. all of my youth them born, you know. And some of them be yeah. really, really big, you know. All yeah, eleven Joe. pound, thirty, uh, thirteen pound, eleven <laughs> ounces, and these things. So yeah. me not, and the way all them come out of them, <laughs> me not, me, we can't kill it here, sir. I, I, you know, I feel like, you know, it me have a good feeling that it worked for real. Mm-hmm. Because as I you growing up, me used to see my cousin them boil tree bark and said, I make them one root, you see me? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I tell you, I said, brother, the man used to live a go go shop by. Yeah, man. Listen. You see what I say? Yeah. Baba roots thing me stay with in the house. Uh, yeah, I'm, man. You know, uh, honestly, even the Baba roots, me can't swear by me. Don't drink it on a regular basis. Because I, I mean, even tell wife that, like, you cannot drink that every day. And yeah. you're not ready for work out yourself every day because you just have to walk around stiff up by yourself. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know comfortable feeling that either. So yeah. Why? Why? It depends. It, it depends on the environment, say, but why? Sometimes you love to feel it, dog. Without telling you, like, <laughs> that's when you say you're still out. Because you're still at work. It, it, yo, it gives you that. It gives you that manly feeling, the, like you're dominant. You yeah, know, yeah. So you're still, me still can't do it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So it, it gives you that boost of confidence. No matter how much girl wa look for your skin up them face, you know what I say? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're thinking good working hard, isn't it? See it. <laughs> right now, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of them girls, they don't start going to touch them, man. They fall in love, is it? <laughs> no, so them sit down and get me in a problem. <laughs> and they're going to bless themselves still. Man, as I respect here. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, yo. I see you're thinking about that. Before we get back into this uh, story right here, um, there are levels to it. There, it and I think grown women know this too, though. It's important for grown men to be with grown women or women that at least understand a male's anatomy, physiology, how the body actually really works. You know, because you know, with the wrong woman, she talk about, come on, get up, go again. Oh, you weak, you just can't go more. And, you know, if she study, she'll learn that um, father... What, what we call it now, Mother Nature and Father Time are, has this chronological clock. And you turn over time, you turn over rate, your rounds get less, you this, that, your firearm earlier, blah, 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 all the other kind of stuff. But when it comes to your levels of sometimes it can be like that, sometimes it can be like this, and sometimes it's shaky, and then other time it's like rock. Like that. And it all depends on how turned on that man is. True story to my life. This is my life story. There with that woman. Lose all feeling for her. I'm young. I start telling myself, say, matter of fact, let me talk. She write to her sister, and she and her sister discuss me. This time, I'm going to search people things. But for some reason, something said there was an envelope sticking out of our bag. And something said, pull out the envelope and read it. So I pull out the envelope and inside of it was a letter. And I read the letter and the letter said, oh, his stuff not working anymore. I don't know what happened to him. All this other stuff. And then one next letter come with that, the letter like them, I correspond back and forth. So the sister tell her, say, you might have to take him to the doctor. And me, them are discussing her. That time... All along, it is just me losing feeling for this person I was with. Like the person became combative, disrespectful, uh, loud, brawling, brash, rude, and I would just I would just lose all feeling for her. So while that I go on now, hear me to myself now. I said, no, sir. It looked like me have to go test the waters to see if the thing actually work. Because I would hate to know that at this age, that my st- mind you, I'm in my 20s, okay? And so nothing not supposed to be around with me that's so already. But my power from a long time. So there we go. 
And I went out and I test and I tested and I tested and I found out that I was in very good shape and doing absolutely well. Could I star in one of them blue movies there how good I was doing? So I realized then that it was the person that I was with. And what was going on at home was it was to the point where I would literally look at her in the house and be like, skin up my face. Like me see a big pile of doo-doo. And in my mind, this is my mind thought. Me would really look upon that woman and say, you dirty, nasty piece of dog shit. You think like it. This is how I'm thinking it out like the worst of the worst. Thinking it. Wouldn't say it to her. Was thinking it about her. Because she had become so unattractive to me. And it was like, man, just go on. Just move on. Go on and left me alone. So it got to the point where, yeah, she would not want to... Like, she would try to engage, and I wouldn't. And then, so she started to talk to her sister, and then I discussed me. But the, the caller we're calling just now, absolutely so. Brought my vibes. She brought my vibes. And I tell females, I tell women this all the time, too. I say, if you really love that man, and if that's really the person you really want to be with, you have to figure out how to be a woman that he desires, right? Whether it's your attitude. Nobody start become no man, pandy man. Because the man is not gay, so I'm not going to be attracted to your man energy or man strength. You as a woman could end up turning your man off completely to the point where when you're skin out and predate out, him don't get no reaction. He, when, when you walk past him naked, him don't get no reaction for you, no nothing. And you could go away trying to boost your ego, telling yourself something wrong with him. Oh, I'm going to work no more. Oh, I'm body pop down. Oh, is that mechanics woman get him and see? that rev up like any ferrari brand new engine so it's not about him necessarily more is about you and how attracted he is to you right and there are things that you can do to make him completely unattracted to you so when you don't kill the man nature for you just know say you freak the relationship up big time that's one thing a woman should never want is for her man's nature to die for her per se it happens. Uh, any man can tell us uh, a true me attack. It happens. See? With that said, though, when Core says, and then I made the mistake of marrying the side chick who became complacent and difficult. Rotted. Carla sound like a real character. Yes, a man can grow extra when properly aroused, says Kaita Jai Empress. That's a woman telling you that. A man can grow extra when properly aroused. Absolutely. Absolutely. I may talk about big extra too. Right? And, and she knows that. Grown women know that. So that's why some women, you know, you have specialists and then you have gal who just jump on it and come now, do something now. And then you have some woman who take you there. And then you're like at your max with her kind of thing. This is real. See? I think this is also the joy of being married. If you're married to somebody who you can explore with and you're completely comfortable with and, you know, uh, wife, you can take her time and you can take your time out and you can go there and arrive at the full length place and these kind of things. Them something there. But anyway, and that for another day. That for another day. I might have saved somebody relationship this morning. Lady, if you're in there, I'll give you a problem. And you notice, say, you know, the knockings is not like it used to be. It has a lot to do with your, the vibe that you're bringing and putting into your relationship as well. Morning, me late, but I hope everybody have a great day. Lovely Anika. Lovely Anika, big up yourself and thank you for being here. Audrey Wright say yes, but me not mean him come with four and end up with 12. All right. No, not like that. In, in Angagosa, you can have a slow dance in bed. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Back to that story I know. Before we go on, off, man, we are over this up. On a previous court hearing, prosecutors, let's back this up a little bit because I see people asking about why is somebody moving around with so much money on them. People have money, you know. I don't know why people have money. Some people think that Jamaica, uh, because it's Jamaica people, that they don't have money. People have money. Yeah, sometimes you don't even look upon them when you're there at Jamaica because it will make you feel like an underachiever. A lot of them have them things. And them nice things and them good things and them whole heap of money. So, it was confirmed that when the robbery took place, that 27,000 Jamaican dollars and 50,000 US dollars 
approximately 7.8 million. Maybe the man was going to do a business transaction and thought he would stop and get some uh, satisfaction on his way and ended up getting robbed from what he thought was females, turned out to be males dressed as females. So the teen was later identified as one of the cross-dressers and was subsequently arrested and charged with robbery and aggravation. He went to court and he pled not guilty to the charges. Now, in a previous court hearing, prosecutors were informed by the mother that she was willing to have him come live, reside with her if they would release him on bail. But she said that her relatives were not too accepting of her son's sexual orientation. I'm a cross-dresser and he's gay and he's openly gay and flamboyant about it and this is Jamaica. She said that it is hard for me to come to court, but he's my son. I want him to come and live with me. But my other family, them don't accept him lifestyle. He's mine. And him treat me good out of the two of them. His despondent mother said yesterday. Now, meanwhile, senior parish judge Laurie Ann Cole Montague urged the accused youth to come off of the streets. Leave the streets alone. Out here, crash dressing tricking people, committing crime, robbery. Somebody are going to kill you. Leave the streets alone. She went on to say, I have been a senior judge for the corporate area for the past seven years, and I have seen members of the same LGBTQ community come to court as defendants and complainants with all types of scars all over their bodies. Jump in people car pretending to be something, somebody found out that you're something else, and then stab them up, and chop them up, and these kind of things. Some members of that community are very vicious, and there are members out there who will mess you up. Mina, think the road is for you, is what the senior jurist said. Cole Montague, the judge, urged the accused man to look in the mirror and decide whether he is comfortable with what he is seeing or not. Me not telling you who to go with or what to go with, but I'm telling you that the path that you're on now, how you choosing to practice that path is not the right path. The teen was offered bail in the sum of $150,000 with at least two shorties. He has been ordered to report to the police station twice weekly he has also made the subject of a daily curfew so you have to be inside the house by a certain time and he is to reside with his mother in the corporate area the matter will be back in court april 19th which is in a few days from now so when i saw the story i thought damn but the mother said that her this is her young teen son, and he's like that. But make it worse, her older son is also like that. Now, may I think to myself, could this be that she a single mother and something happened to our boy picnic them that she missed? You know? I'll say it again. I was watching a documentary out of Jamaica and they were covering the faces, like blur out the face them. It was it's called something about under a tree where they're having a discussion under a tree. And they blurred out the face them. And some of the outfit them, you can see like short skirt with legs crossed. But we can tell say a man foot them can foot them big and long and they leg them tough and hairy. And but uh, them dressed like woman. And one of them was saying in a my community, you know, me are done. In a my community, me are shot up, me are gunman. That's what the people them know me as. But you see, when night time come, yeah, man, I saw we make with money. So me put on, me come round other side there, yeah, and me come put on my outfit, and me go to work. And they ask him if he goes to work robbing people or if he goes to work selling sex. The man said both of them. Because sometimes you can't rob, not, not the death you rob. So you do a act and you collect a money and you go back. 
And the next time, the opportunity then if you rob, because you don't really want to do that. So you do miss a rotten. So, and the amount of them that was there, and one thing a lot of them, or almost all of them had in common that stuck out with me, was the conversation around how they became that way. Um, how they arrived at that orientation. Was it something you felt in yourself since you were small, the um, interviewer asked, or is this because of wants and needs? Somebody inveigled you to go this way. You know, so we give things if you come to this with we are wherever. About 99% of them said their first experience was that experience. It was a guy. It was a family friend. It was a man from the community who everybody revered. It was some, some individual that was a man that either forced himself on them or coerced them at a young age into and trap them somewhere and do something to them. And because that was their first experience. And, and they, at the time when they were saying it, none of them would admit, but they started going, hmm, I wonder if it's, that's why I choose this. I wonder if it's, that's why I'm still so. Well, I remember one of them saying, well, it gone too bad already because I feel right to me you now. But I still have to wonder, like, if that never happened to me, would I have went down this path? Yeah. And it was based on watching that documentary that I first started talking about the boys in Jamaica. Me get whole heap of cussing, you know, from Jamaica, you know. Move on, go ahead. That's why you run with God foreign. I rape, let me rape you off, dog, a Clarendon, like a body boy. That's what they used to tell me about myself. And now may I try to tell the people them say I probably had the best childhood you could ever think of. I was untouched. My childhood was my childhood was a childhood I would bottle up and give to every child. And me know say every child would have a beautiful childhood. But me know say life is not like that. And some people have it rough, right? So I started talking about, yeah, every time we talk about this type of stuff. We talk about the dirty man them and why they don't leave the little girl them. But nobody is talking about the influential men who are going after the boys. Whether it's uh, the young member them um, who people fear or the done in the community or somebody who fly in from foreign on a regular basis. Come use their knicks knocks, you know, bring in barrel. I remember seeing two youth and the two youth them do a video I talk about how oh, we dress fresh every day, you know, and shirt off and match shoes and this after that. I me hear one of them say about a next barrel soon coming because him people are in person take care of him and sending him things on a regular basis. Now, when they were bragging and doing all that, you could definitely see that they were very much because they were open with it. You know, a whole heap of woman mannerisms, they were very open with it. They never try hide it. And I was like, damn. And then I remember seeing a video. And I watched the video with my wife. So I let me see long I watch them video, let me watch it with wifey. Because we have to confirm, say, you see it? And the video was a youth full of tattoo, big gun in my hand. I'll never forget this video. It just stuck. And a youth that looked pretty young. Early teens, mid mid to late teens, probably. And the stuff with the man did that do to the youth with the gun. And with him personal part, down there so. At the same time. And the gun. At the same time. Interchangeably. And I said, blood fire, this is Jamaica. And them something near the youth them I got through behind the scenes, you know. Yeah. And then there was a video that went popular back in the day. When a youth went to go thief a car. And he got caught. And when the police them did a question him, I always wondered what happened to him. When the police was questioning him, him did I say something to the police about can them have him handcuff a station? And the police are questioning him and him I said something about Raja, Raja, Ara the police said, We know that you are a part of Raja Gyang. I mean, I remember the name, I, mean, I just I used the name Raja. We know that you are a part of Raja Gyang. We've been watching him for a while. Right? So, how about you just tell me the truth? Who sent you over there to go thief the car? 
the little youth and I'm handcuffed. Hear him. Him say, first him not talk, then him, him say something like this. Raja, 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 fuck me and tell me same love me. I said, what the f and even the policeman them was like, and the you look at you just start talk. Like him and my man, me will protect him. Me not say nothing. Raja fuck me and tell me say him love me. And I know him send me go teeth to care and me go teeth it to myself. And I was like, yo. So yeah, I say that to bring up this story this morning, but me not bring up the story for make fun of people and them pick me. Because to me, children are off limits. I say that to bring up an awareness level of certain things that are happening within our society that I feel like we are still not paying attention to. Because of all the stigma and taboos that goes along with this topic, we just simply refuse to look at the topic for what the topic is and see around us the explosion that's going on and actually give a listening ear and a thoughtful sight to what is actually taking place. You know what I mean? Remember that. Zeke start that. Boy, I mean, I know if I Zeke started it, you know, but I know mean, I say, yeah, and now it's gunman, bad man, any kind of man. It, it's, it's, it's all the people who you would never suspect to be that are. That are. I remember I said to you all recently, I said, Imagine living in a world where you live in a community that is so volatile, police even afraid to come there. Your community is run by gunmen, known gunmen and dons. Nobody talking in this community because they're under pressure anyway. Don't want to be labeled as snitch or nothing. Them burn down your house, shoot up your family stuff. That's your everyday life, right? Your reality. Now imagine there's a gunman in a, your community who is also lean up like that. And when him send go draw for your son, you know why your daughter know him why your son. Aha. Uh -huh. It happens. And it happens way more than you think. Right. Right. So when me see one I talk about, oh, him bleach out, come look cranny and yo, woman really like them kind of boy. I just know say a whole heap of things are going behind the scenes, my friend. Whole heap. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Morning, so flow. Morning, family. How you doing? Oh, why would all the sound like Vicky son? <laughs> you are going to me, man. Are you? Can't miss yeah. the voice here, you know? Eh? Can't miss the voice here at all. No, oh, big up everybody on the channel still, you know? Yeah. How you been? My good man, my good now. Can people let me stop ask for you, you know? Me know, man, but you know what? So I come on a couple of commands still. It's a, it's a portion of little things while I'm never on. See um, I kind of did message if it's tell you one of them, but you never answer still. But anyway, the topic you were here talk about, mm -hmm. it's a very common for true. Yeah, man. Uh, we are act like so it don't happen, you know? It um, it um, I'm going to tell you something too. Over on my channel, I have a part one mm -hmm. with a real life story mm -hmm. with a guy with me where he asks me for around this one. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I have a real life story up up on my channel. Yeah. Since the people are asking me, me I make content, but I just make the first real content and the part two coming with the ending when me I interview somebody where another woman. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm gonna beat up on men because a woman there with them son too. I worry for things are gone. Yeah. Where men with men. Men with their daughters, yeah. men with their sons, and stuff like that. Women with them sons. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm having people for interview and stuff. So, if mm. I look for me, them can't find me, but I'll be here now, so flow. But you have to tell, okay, so since you're here now, and tell the people them right now, because 900 people there here, tell them where they can find you. Because they always ask for you. Legendary Ninja Telly, right here on YouTube. You know, so he's not a blogger, me just a talker. Right. So, yeah. So, I come with the real kingdom. So, so, coming up like next week, like three different real stories. 
and stuff like that. You know, I'm like a dip in a little like a dance a little bit and thing, but you know, and like a gossip. But you, you know what I look for? You know what I look for? I'm looking for yeah. you to start creating content like on a regular basis. I too much busy, you know. But here we may tell you though, in, in, in order for your platform to grow, you have yeah. to be consistently hitting with new content. So do be a favor. Mm -hmm. And it's going to work out for you. Yeah. Make it a point of duty to put up at least three pieces every week. All right. Listen to me. Monday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, however you want to do it. But mm -hmm. it, it just even a three piece, 15 minutes a piece, 10 minutes a piece content every week. Consistently just put that up first. I'm not telling you got seven days a week, but yeah. two to three times a week. And you will see a big change. Can we go over there now and don't see nothing? And then we well, have to remember yo. somebody did disappear for a while, like six months, you know. Right. And we did a wonder like what three different reasons. Yeah, man. Yeah, we was hoping everything was good, you know, because we know life is life in. You know, everything never really, really good still, but miss, but oh, there's a lot. I, uh, I'll talk about it one day. All right. Well, you have your yeah, platform. But, mm -hmm. So just tell it because I can't put my camp in the link and anything, you know. Then I ask me, I see it on the TV. Then I say, What the channel? Spell it, spell it, spell it, spell it, spell it, spell it, spell it to me right. slow. I'm going to spell it out right now, write it in the comment section. All right, L E G E N D A R Y, Ninja N I N J A, L E P E L E, P E L E, yeah, Kelly. T E L E. Okay. Yeah. Now is that one word? No, it's it's three so Okay. So three words. All them things that are important and people will not find you. Let, uh, right. Why well, more give some lessons for elevate that thing there? But uh, but me did ask you, you remember me that sweaty I'm said to you, you know what? Uh, my name is not gonna bother me. Just like those. No man, don't is do that. Man. I, I want to tell you say, you know, um, the channel like, improved now wearing links and stuff like that because I couldn't get any help from the Jamaican. So this American where he is kind of big. I, him helped me like really tell me, say, do this, do that, change the picture because that's too dark, make it brighter. Right. This, that, that. So this American guy really helped me in a certain way. So I yeah. kind of improve, put on my links there, man. But I don't really post so flow like that, for true. Yeah, you need And to. he told me that. You need and then to. tell me, don't make it too long between 7 to 12 minutes. Stuff, no stuff like that, because I really need a guidance there still. Right. So if you look from my first bit the video to the last one now, the real story, hey, people, I'm like, oh, what is the real story for going, you know? I mean, no one love people business, and I'll get to know me. Because nigga, I have things to do. All right. All right. All right. Drop the so I'll, I'll do that though. The three video a week. And please, please, wanna go and go look. Because the first one, the first part, the last one I'm gonna drop, you could see that the intro is better. Everything look more official. Just drop your I mean, video. I get a little bit more comfortable. Just drop your video. So check, wanna check me out here? All right, we Because will. I'm gonna die the same way, you know. You All right. I'm still member. You see it? Pick up yourself All right. same way. So flow, follow my back. Become a sister and follow my people. So force and subscribe. No, Later. sir. Later, you wicked. Should have easy, you know. I like one. Be subscribe to our channel. But Vicky, <laughs> Vicky is trouble. But yeah, that's one of our members that we've been, uh, we want to know what's going with her. You know, because Vicky was very prominent over here and then she disappeared. Usually, when stuff like that happens, we wonder, right? It's like a family member go missing. You kind of wonder, because life is life, you know. So, and, you know, you know, if you go through things on your own, sometimes you could come and say, and you'll be surprised to know how much help is there for you if you have got through certain things. You see what I'm saying? But we are prideful people. And this is. This is Caribbean to the bone. Jamaican, me know, but me know Caribbean people upon this. A lot of us are raised this way. Go through your own problems. Don't tell nobody about where you go through. If me with dead fitter standing next to somebody who have a gallon of water, you know what I mean? Instead of turning to them and say, please, may I beg you a little water? May I dead for thirst? Me thirsty bad, right? So... Uh, just remember, say, whatever you're going through, man, if you want to soldier it out on your own, that's fine. But if you ever get to the place where 
you feel like things are overwhelming, you are going through too much, uh, whatever, tap in. Tap in. Somebody is going to be able to relate, and you'll be surprised to know how much help and encouragement could be out here for you. Right? All right. Good hearing you, Vicky. I couldn't miss the voice. You see, you see, as soon as she spoke, I knew exactly who it was. And that's a different number. I mean, know exactly who it was. All right. Now, off of that subject there, because just like Vicky just said, it, it happens, and it happens way more than we think it does. Right? So what I want you all to leave today with that part is when you hear Dutty Man, don't just think, leave the girls them alone. Think, leave the children them alone because it looked like Jamaica had an explosion over the past decade or so where it became very rampant among the men and boys. And now we have a, a, a big population of who are very flamboyant and open. And, you know, a lot of them, if you ask them, when that start, um, how did you know? And they'll tell you that, well, I mean, I know nothing about me. So my first experience was, bam. How old were you when your first experience happened? You would see that it's an age where it was an illegal age. It was an age where consent is not legal kind of thing. So you could put one-on-one -on -one together and see that we have a, a problem of epidemic proportions that we're actually not paying attention to for whatever the reason is the stigma. Man, they're in a Batman business. Yo, low them Batman talk the dog. Yo, me no one talk about nothing. We have to do with that. And, you know, run away from what it is we need to actually be facing. We can't fix things, you know, if we don't talk about them, you know. It starts with a conversation, and then through conversation will come some understanding, and then we work towards solution. So however, however uncomfortable it might be, these difficult conversations need to be had, right? Right. Wayne Course says for the past six years, and remember that the Samaya agenda was signed and sealed. All right. All right. You see, hey, Wayne, you see how they neatly went back in there and took it and signed it? We'll talk about that on a different day. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, let's move on. We're at the top of the hour. We're going to extend a little bit more. Just do an update on the Haitian children. But first, let me talk about Florida, where I live. So there are two new laws in Florida. And the two new laws are, for one, I don't know if you've noticed that they've been making changes to outside. Like, for instance, the park benches. The park benches used to be a long bench, and it have two arms on the ends, right? Somebody could lay out on that bench. And probably even go to sleep. Daytime even. They started making the park benches with multiple arms. So it has like only space for one person body to fit in between each one. And I was wondering, a lot of other things are changing. I've seen them putting up spike things in certain places. And I was wondering what was happening. Well, lo and behold, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, he went in for another one and he got it. And this one is, it's basically almost illegal to be homeless in the state of Florida, but it's not. You can be homeless all you want to. It is just now illegal for you to sleep or camp out in any public space whatsoever. That law went right into effect recently. So parks, uh, behind buildings. Wherever you want to think that you can, a homeless person could go sleep, you, you can no longer do it in the state of Florida. So people are like, and, and in Florida, I just said that to wifey not too long ago, to I say, yo, Florida might be the best state to be homeless in. I couldn't picture being homeless in somewhere like New York or Philadelphia, where the weather in the wintertime gets so brutal, right? People die outside, frozen. Florida. You have nice weather almost all year round, especially South Florida, closer to the Caribbean, etc. So people would come and camp out on the beaches. Them go buy a tent. They buy the tent at Walmart and a camping tent. And if you go down to the beach for a walk in the late night, you would see these tents on the beach. And nobody bothered them, and they don't bother nobody. And then they'll be gone by morning time come. 
people wrap up them tent. Some people walk around with their tents all day. Some people hide them tent in a place and then go back in the evening, put out them tent again. That will no longer be happening. They can't be in any tents. They can't be in any parks. They can't be anywhere. And people are saying, okay, so when you do that to all the homeless people, where are they supposed to go? Well, Ron DeSantis said, we're not just saying they can't sleep anywhere. They will, have de they will now have designated fenced-in areas where tent cities can be made. So if you want to have your own tent, now we have shelters already. Understandably, shelters are full. Some people don't want to go into a shelter. We will have these designated areas that will be fenced off and barricaded off and it will be secured with law enforcement personnel securing the area and you can go put your tent in that area. However, you're only allowed to stay in that area for up to one year. So basically, this is forcing people to do the right thing. And sometimes people need to be forced to do the right thing. Some people get complacent and comfortable, believe it or not, with the street life. Inside of these areas, they will have all the resources that's needed. Those who are addicted to drugs, you can start going through a um, detox and a, a counseling program. Those who are having mental issues, they can have a mental evaluation done and then go through some counseling and get put on medication and all these other things. Those who have children, they can go into a certain program for a single mom who is homeless with her kids, for a father who is this, this that, and the other. All the resources will be met right there. And you have to check into that area and you have one year. After one year, you will probably have to leave the state of Florida. Right. Now, if you ask me if that's a good idea, I say absolutely yes. And the reason why I say absolutely yes is this. Purchase this property in the area where I feel it was nice. And then all of a sudden came an influx of people, like from up north. We started seeing a lot of Pennsylvania, and New Jersey, and New York tags driving around the place, looking. They're building. Real estate is booming right where I'm at, right? And these apartment buildings are booming. They're doing these mega apartment buildings close by. And with the influx of the people came a whole lot of people just struggling around. Like riding around all day on a bicycle with a whole heap of something packed on the back of it with a three wheel carry something or walking around all day dirty, them, them catch up in front of every gas station, they're at the stoplights begging. They're, and it just became more and more and more to the point where it started spilling over into. Now, I'll be honest with you, uh, I feel for people being homeless, but if me I work hard, if I'm working hard and paying good money, to purchase a piece of property and raise my family in a certain area, then I don't want certain things in the area where I'm paying to be. And that's just that. It might sound selfish to some people, but that's just that. I mean, I could have been out on the streets too. I made it a choice not to be. Yeah, and I understand that some people are out there beyond their choice, whether it's mental health issues, they cracked under pressure, whatever the, whatever the case may be. But there is help out there for them. So that's one that got put into place in the state of Florida. Uh, and you see how many idle lands around. That's why I was against the Airbnb in New York. Now they are homeless in the streets. Right, here is the kicker. Now, this is the same Ron DeSantis where people are saying, I'm, I wouldn't move to Florida because that's your governor. Here's another one. <coughs> this happened a while back now. Forever alimony. Could you imagine being married to somebody? Say me married a woman. Me and Shakira are married. Eight years in, she files divorce. The relationship is done. I have to pay her alimony in the state of Florida for the rest of her life. Not for the next five years, not for the next 10 years, for the rest of her life. It's called forever alimony. Ron DeSantis made sure that forever alimony was no longer a thing in the state of Florida. Right. 
So along with the homeless not being able to just sleep anywhere they feel like it, because people have got up early morning and go open them business, you know, and them are find uh, homeless people doo-doo in the back of your business, uh, pitch tent in the front of your business, all these things. So getting them off the streets and actually getting them help and giving them a timeline to get themselves together and giving them the resources to get themselves together, that's a damn good thing. Clean up the area. Then, that forever alimony thing is a reason why I like him. The other thing, a reason why I liked him was the agenda they were trying to sneak into the school on the back of black history. And I told people to go really read because I was against him because of that until I read. So that's another one. The third, now I know that when my kids go to school, they won't be uh, hearing certain things coming from their teachers and they won't be forced to digest certain things without it passing by me first, right? Because that's what it's about for me. It's about my children, my family, their safety, and so on and so forth. Raising them in a nice, secured area, etc., etc. And then here's the kicker. The last one now is that the squatters' rights. Squatters' rights has been abolished in the state of Florida. Squat. What are squatters' rights? Squatters' rights is the reason why the Jamaican landlord in New York end up killing the two people, them, his tenants downstairs and kill him girlfriend too. And he wasn't the only one to do it. If you just Google landlords that killed their tenants, you will see a whole lot of it going on because squatters had rights. Imagine you have a piece of property and somebody moves into your property. And when you go check by your property, them live there. And they're telling you, where them want to tell you, say, and you can't just tell them, hey, get your ass out my house. I didn't give you permission to be in here. You got to take me to court. You better take me to court. You know the law. You know the squatter's rights law. I saw one squatter family actually telling the lady, you got to take me to court. You know the law. You know the squatter's rights law. They were in this lady's house for about 90 days, three more months before she actually got to get them out and have to pay a lawyer fee and everything and go fight them in court. So now in the state of Florida, squatters rights abolished. The police is given the power to remove, physically remove people from a property within 24 hours of the owner discovering that you're in their place you're not paying no rent. Get the hell out. And the police can remove you physically out of the property. That's a big win-win for me as well. So things like that, me like. That's the reason why I say you can want a Democratic president, but you might have a Republican governor for your state. And it depends on how you vote because it's not the same. Just, oh, me, I'm going to vote Democratic right across the board because I'm a Democrat. I'm not. I'm not loyal to any of these parties. I'm loyal to who is able to give me what I'm looking for, right? Country Girl says, do you see people just can't walk into the stores here and just walk out with a shopping cart full of stuff and the cops, the cops what? The cops' hands are tied? Where? Because that's not happening in Florida, but I saw a video yesterday where a guy did it, I think it was in Pennsylvania, the man was walking at the store and him, then they are full up in bag with things and the store owners and everybody is lo just walking around him looking and then when he was leaving the store, somebody said to him, hey, you can't be doing that and he was like, F you, meet me outside. Not Florida. Not in Florida. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on in a lot of other states that's not going on in Florida. Uh, I'm very sensitive to the immigration thing. I'm an immigrant myself. However, I didn't want... Uh, the, the, the borders are open. Everybody is just coming in from left, right, and center. And then, like, are, is anybody checking to see if any of these guys that are coming in are registered sex offenders, serial rapists, murderers from this other country they are coming from? Nah. And they have no way of finding out, right? So just letting in people randomly, rampantly, just so, just so, just so, 
Ron DeSantis for Florida was like, Florida is not going to be one of those states. So, hey, he applied for a grant program which allowed him to get a couple of buses and he bussed them to the state where the governors of those states were saying, send them, we'll take care of them. He said, okay, since you'll take care of them, get them on the damn bus. Here, so once they're found in Florida, put them on the bus, up out of here. And that was that. A lot, of the, a lot of the migrants that were coming in are saying, we didn't want to be in New York. We didn't want to come to New York. But where we ended up at, they put us on a bus and sent us here or wherever else they ended up at, right? So again, a lot of stuff's going on in other states that's not going on in Florida. And for that, I kind of like Governor Ron DeSantis, right? Ronica Gale said, a lot of stuff is going on in Jamaica. If you live on the land for more than 12 years, pay back taxes, and it's yours. I've heard that. I've heard that, but I, I don't know if that actually holds up in court. Alicia says, what are the side effects of that? What are the side effects of what? Wayne Core says, and if they rent your house or apartment, it takes one year before you can lawfully evict them. Yes, yeah, six months to a year. So somebody could come into your apartment under or your house, rent your property, uh, under proper law, sign a lease, and then just stop paying your rent after like the first month. It's going to take you about another six months to a year to get that person out. That's crazy. That's crazy. So... In the state of Florida, you don't pay your rent, you're up out of there. They, I think they might give you a month to get yourself together. But you're up out of there. It, it will no longer be any long journey for landlords and homeowners to have to fight somebody. Because people started taking advantage of this. I'm going to rent that place here. I actually saw a video where a Jamaican woman did it to another Jamaican that she knew. She knew somebody. They've known each other from Jamaica. The person has a property up here. And she, you know, rent her the property. And I think one or two months in, she stopped paying rent. And she completely destroyed the inside of the house while the man was taking her to court to get her out his property. And by the time she was, it was time for her to leave, he's going to have to do, the, the amount of renovation with him, I forgot to do, is criminal. He, she should go to prison for what she did to his house. Stuff up the bathtub upstairs, make the bathtub full up and full over. The water wet up from upstairs, gone downstairs, like bust out holes in the walls, like, do all kind of stuff out of just being malicious because the person is saying, hey, if you're not able to pay the rent, I'm going to have to move you out. It's business, you know, and I, I need the rent. Sometimes these people that own these buildings, it's in their name. They don't outright own the building. They have a mortgage on that building. So if you don't pay rent, they can't pay mortgage. They end up losing the building. You understand? It's a trickle-down effect. Right. When court says, and right, you lose your investment and your money. And, and you stand to lose the most. You stand to lose the most while this person is sitting there, work full time, you know, have a good job, saving off of your back. And they tell themselves, I'm going to work, save, buy my own house. Because by the time me done with SoFlo, I'm going to have enough money to put a solid down payment on a new property for myself. In the meantime, can I go court then now? Can I go court? And you going back and forth to court trying to get this person out. Them go court, them cry, them ball, them tell the judge some sub story. I don't know how they do it. And it keeps rolling month after month after month after month while they're able to save all their paychecks. Crazy. Crazy. One woman had to use rats to get rid of some people from out of her house. I saw one in New York the other day. This girl's parents died and left her a $990,000 house. It's a million-dollar home. And squatters take up the house. And she went there trying to get them out. And the squatters called police on her. 
It's on YouTube. The squatters called police on her. And she left her own property in handcuffs. The police handcuffed her and took her out of there. So yeah, it doesn't mean anything to you until it means a lot to you. Until it actually straight applies to you, then everybody wants something done. Me no want nobody in my property. If you're not paying no rent, get your ass up out my property. And I love the state of Florida because certain things here is just a no-go. A straight up no-go. A friend of mine in New York is going through that for over a year right now, says Jamaica from the outside. Absolutely. We know people who are going through it, personally. Audrey writes, I hope people turn some on. Some people just stay like that, my friend. They don't business where you lose. They look at you as a stepping stone. I'm going to go in that property. Me up here in one or two months rent. Make him get comfortable. After that, me have a story for him every month. Me no say. We can't use the courts and stay in here for 12 months. So the next 10 months, I'm saving my money. By the time they put me out of this, may I buy my own house. No more rent for me. And people use you like that to come up off of you. My brother-in-law is going through the same thing in New York City. The tenants even took out a restraining order on him. You see? Kataja Empress saying, you see that? The tenants... To, to be so emboldened, you're in my place. You're not paying me rent. And, you're, and, and the law allows you to take out restraining order against me. And you're living in my place. My brother had to put up insurance on the property. And then it went up in flames. <laughs> it went up in flames. <laughs> Audrey writes, boy, the way things are going, you can't even spend one night in a family place. Six months lease, only with some very fine prints. Six months lease, that's the thing, fam. They don't care about the fine prints. This is why I love Florida, because every lease has the fine prints that says if you're not paying rent, you have to come out. But for some reason in the court, it's still upheld because you can't. What it says is if people are, if this has been this person's home for more than 90 days or something like that, you can't just pitch them back outside. You have to be humane and consider their needs and give them a fighting chance and some kind of BS like that. Took me one year to get one out of my first floor apartment, says King Biggs. Yeah, so big up to uh, Governor Randy Santos in Florida. A lot of people say they wouldn't come here to live because they don't like you and they don't like your uh, the way you do things, but I'm loving it. I haven't seen anything that will hurt me yet, and I see everything benefits me. I'm going to love it and protect hardworking people, hardworking, progressive, productive people who are paying their taxes, protected. That's what I'm about. Now, here's another one. This one is out of Jamaica. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all know about the um, 1963 Coral Gardens massacre in Jamaica. I think this is full circle, but I also think this is a political ploy because, you know, election is in the air. So everybody is getting their cut. And I saw the Right Honorable Andrew Holness bigging up a certain man the other day and he was doing it during Black History Month and I said wow that's sad because this is the same man that called for a massacre on the Rastafarian people and he said if you can bring them in alive bring them in dead right and uh, so Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Harsh Chang has indicated now that land at Albion Heights in St. James would be transferred to the Rastafari Coral Gardens Benevolent Society. Albion Heights. Isn't that where Smith used to be? The guy, uh, your highness, the, 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 the prophet, the one who his followers thought was God. Isn't, uh, Albion Heights him used to there in St. James. Well, anyhow. anyhow. They're loving 50 people move to Florida every day. They're moving out now. 
there was a there was a publication yesterday that said they are moving out in droves in Florida. A wave came right before and during the pandemic, and they are moving out with the same speed now because life ain't what they thought it was going to be. A lot of people are saying that the wages in Florida is not matching uh, your everyday spending. You get paid too little, and the price has gone up significantly for rent and these kind of things. So a lot of people are moving here, but uh, more people are actually now starting to move out, according to what I saw yesterday. But, all right. Now, this property ultimately belonged to the Rastafarians uh, community. It has been approved by the formal handover, but the formal handover will take a little more time because the bureaucracy must be at work, Chang said. In fact, I expect that very soon at this first quarter of the new financial year that we will have a cabinet submission to formally transfer this land to the Coral Gardens Benevolent Society. That is when you can get the title and you can call the land your own. So they are going to give this land to the Rastafari community along with proper paperwork that will forever say that this land belongs to them. Chang, who is the member of parliament for St. James Northwestern, in which Albion Heights falls, told members of the Rastafarian community last Friday during their annual Bad Friday commemoration of the 61st anniversary of the 1963 atrocities. The earmarked land is part of benefits that were agreed upon with the government following years of lobbying by the RCGBS on behalf of those who were killed or maimed on Good Friday in 1963. The atrocities unfolded when the former Prime Minister Sir Alexander Bustamante sanctioned the Jamaica police brutality against the Rastafarians early into Jamaica's political independence from the United Kingdom. And that was done under the Jamaica Labour Party, JLP. They bulldozed out the land. They beat down the Rastafarians them. It was a bloody massacre. A lot of people were hurt. Some died, were killed, etc. And you had a prime minister at the time who was saying, this is what I want you to do. Beat out them Ras. Yeah, bring in the whole of them. If the, if the prisons can't and jails can't hold them, the asylums will. Bring them in, dead or alive. If the prisons and jails can't hold them, the asylums will. Bring them in, dead or alive. I tell people this because Rasta history in Jamaica. Today you see, you know, you'll see a lot of women fly down to Jamaica and she wants her a Rasta man, especially women of another persuasion. And then you will see one love, one heart. Biggest Rasta ever, Bob Marley. He is the uh, face card of Jamaica tourism industry vibes, vibration. Come to Jamaica, man, and feel all right. It's time for you to return to Jamaica, the land of this, that, and the other. And at the same time, on the flip side, Jamaicans, Rastas in Jamaica have always been treated as less than to be respected and less than human and there was a time gone by which wasn't too long ago it was 1963 when a bloody massacre was ordered up on them and their community and it took place and around that time before during and after them used to get beat up on a regular basis man the police had the authority to hold them pop out them dreadlocks, beat them, use scissors, trim out them here, violate them in all kinds of ways. This was the Jamaica, this Jamaica we in, same way, right? Now, somebody asked me and said, so Flo, how come Bob Marley is not a national hero, but he is so recognized globally? I said, because Bob had dreadlocks, and he said, Rasta. Bob Marley is a symbol of hope love and unity nothing else gunshot 
Bob Marley get, Rita get gunshot, and them people that could have easily changed their mind and start making music about pick up a gun, retaliate, you have to kill who kill you, any means necessary, yeah, and they didn't. He stuck to the same love and love alone, I gotta do it. Yeah, him stick to the same unity and strength. He stick to the same. So that became the mantra, right? Bob Marley today. Listen to what I'm telling you right now. If Bob Marley did not have dreadlocks, especially the dreadlocks where Bob have. Because then we go on like them into dreadlocks. And you know? some people say, well, there are politicians with dreadlocks today. So flow, so things and lawyers. So things have gone pretty different. If you notice the politician and the lawyer, them with dreadlocks, them dreadlocks have to twist out to the root. And them dreadlocks have to fine and thin and look almost like braids. You can't have no big chunks of locks because it strikes fear. It looks and says unruly. It looks and says untamable that kind of stuff so if bob marley actually had like a low fade haircut and if bob marley uh probably even if he did say rasta but he had a normal low fade haircut he would have been made a national hero a long time ago but bob was a rasta rebel and a rebel rasta with a cause and because of that and his looks they will use the look to promote the brand and they will reap all the benefits that come from the brand being promoted using his image, his look. But you look like how him look and try to get yourself in a position of power or respect and see how hard it is today in Jamaica. Today. I'm talking about April 3rd, 2024. Today. It is hard. They are still not loved like how they portray. They are still not respected like how... The system portrays. And them know that too. And when them hear me I talk this, them know say I'm them me I talk up for because I true. You understand? Right. So Rasta not get them just due yet, them just respect yet. And what has Rasta done? Rasta been telling us from the beginning till now, right? Look out for certain things. It's coming. They've been telling you, watch what you consume. Because, you know, you must eat where you grow and grow where you eat and these kind of things. They've always been promoting self-sufficiency. They've always been promoting entrepreneurship. They've always been promoting a level of independence that way you cannot be used and abused. They've always been promoting health. Your health is your wealth. The man got to do the whole heap of rum, drinking and smoking, tobacco and this, that and the other. Run on the beach, jog, exercise, sweat, eat, most natural food. Them call it ital. All these things. They've been saying all that. Don't you know that they took all those things from Rasta, rebranded it as if everybody is coming up with these things now for themselves out of nowhere and try to leave Rasta out of it. Well, all them things they are Rasta teaching from the beginning until now and they still live like that to this day right when i talk about no puppy show rum dread let me not talk about them rum dread the way i always say with rum cup and cigarette in them hand i ain't talking about them i'm talking about real rasta we have real rasta jamaica a whole heap of them too and they still not respected right so to see them now with chang them saying this piece of land will be turned over to them given to them with the proper paperwork that will say it belongs to them for them to be able to do as they wish with it, form a community, do so and so forth. Me hear one journalist say, no. yo, you ever go up a Bubble Hill yet? The next one said, no, but I'm planning on going up there. I think they were supposed to go visit Sizzler. He said, you know what I noticed when I went up there? He said, what? He said, there's not one person up there that's obese. He said, what? He said, yeah, there's not one person up there at Bubble Hill that's obese. There's not one person up there who have, like, these diseases that's plaguing the nation, the population, down the hill. That alone speaks for itself, right? I said, wow, that's deep. You know, taking me little sense out of the nonsense. All right. So he said you'll be able to not only develop an active cultural center, but they'll also be able to... Um, based on his understanding, to move the current home from Norwood to here. Furthermore, he assured the community that the government would assist in refurbishing the houses that the Rastas would choose to build there. 
paying back to them. I'm not sure of the structural state of the buildings, if they can be refurbished or if they would have to knock them down and start over. But there is enough land space here to do what is required to provide a strong culture and active economic and education center because this is where we will have a spot where you can have a spot where you can put the historical data and have a continuous presence in helping to inform others in the society of what happened to the Rastafari movement. Six decades later, Chang, who is also Minister of National Security, argued that many citizens, including some Rastafarians, they continue to face post-colonial obstacles with our lawmen. You see? So if you never hear it from me, he see here it's Chang saying it to you as well. They admit it. They admit it. So I don't know secret may I talk. He said, the truth is, up to this day, there's always some conflict between those who are struggling and the police from time to time. Separate from any criminal activities, the struggle for justice by many who are not privileged is a challenge still in this society, unfortunately. The 61st commemoration of the 1963 incident was held under the theme Community Reparations Now and saw several cultural representations, including emotional testimonies from those who lived it, went through it, get them head, bust up them locks, cut off, get beaten, had to run into the hills, and those who survived it and are able to tell their stories today. I am pleased to be here today because this is an event that needs to be respected and recognized. And I want to say, <coughs> we took a turn as a government, when we apologize, sorry, when we apologize and started the process of not only recognizing the movement that's active in Montego Bay, the Coral Gardens Benevolent Society, following years of agitation by the RCGBS, an inquiry was done by the Office of the Public Defender, and in December of 2015, the office published a report concluding that the Rastafarians that had suffered extreme acts of violence of their basic human rights, the public defender recommended that the state should apologize to them and should pay them compensation to individual survivors and to make reparations to the wider Rastafarian community. In June of 2016, representatives of that community met with the government representatives and submitted a 13-point plan which forms the basis of the negotiations. The government in 2017 apologized to the resident of Coral Gardens, particularly to the Rastafarian community for the atrocities that were meted out to them then. That has to come with some level of compensation as well to those who were directly affected, not just some, oh, we apologize and move forward. Among the compensation was the establishment of a trust fund of now less than $10 million to the survivors and their families, along with six, the provision of six lots of Pinnacle at Pinnacle that will become designated protected heritage sites and which will also include a Rastafarian village. So just putting that bit of good news out there, um, I want to hear it from the rest of them, and I'm sure they will be in this comment section telling me SoFlo is only smoke and mirrors that. Or they'll be here telling us it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a march in the right direction. For me, it seems like it's a march in the right direction. It's something that's well overdue, and I look forward to it being put in place and completely um, up and operational. Sleepy trying to capitalize on something. Veronica Gale, this is why I said every year should be election year. Because you know, see how much things the people them get. You see how much things that they should have gotten all these years that they get when election come around. Yeah, Crystal G says them too generous. It seems like them want to move from where they currently are. I may not trust them. Well, we will see. 
and we will hear what it is from these people. Because them can talk for themselves and they are very vocal people. Them stand up for them rights. So sooner or later we will hear if it's a trick thing or if it is something that is genuine. Right? Right. I think it's just a publicity stunt and politics type says Wayne Core. Well, if that's the case, um, Wayne, then shame on Chang and shame on Andrew and his administration if that's what they are doing. If they're pulling a rabbit out the hat trick just because it's politics time again, we the people will see it. And we the people will call them out on it and point them out on it as well. So everybody, keep your eyes on it as we move forward and hopefully it work out the way it's supposed to work out, right? Right. All right. With that said, here is our last topic for the morning. And our last topic for the morning is just an update to how the children who came from Haiti who are in Jamaica are doing now. Shout out to the Jamaica Loop. Shout out to the Gleaner. Shout out to the Star. Shout out to the Jamaica Observer. Shout out to all these entities that I do take information from. All right. Haitian children sleeping peacefully. Finally, after arriving in Jamaica, I learned a couple of things about them and a couple of things about the caretakers that came with them. Remember, there's a language barrier there. Nothing must be more scarier to a child than to end up in a place where you are surrounded by strange faces and not only that, nobody speaks the language that you speak. And the last thing you remember was gunshots going off and what sounded like world war, whatever is happening, and then you escaped into something that seems to be safe, but it's all these strange faces around you and no one can communicate on your, not even your basic level. So they have their caretakers with them. So Jamaica has not only accommodated the children, but they have also accommodated their caretakers. This sentiment was expressed by two of the 59 Haitian children who have disabilities who recently arrived in Jamaica from their war-torn home in Haiti. When asked how they were doing, they said they're finally getting sleep. Right. This is according to Father Garvin Augustine, who is the executive director of the Mustard Seed Communities International. Shout out to the Mustard Seed Communities International, the nonprofit organization now housing the children and their 13 caregivers. At the time when they left Haiti, a lot of things were happening. There was a big prison break that saw over 4,000 inmates let loose on the streets. There were, but, but you know, I had, a, I had a feeling about that too because I watched a documentary in Haiti about Haiti's lockup prison. And there were a lot of Haitians who, they were in there for what we would call misdemeanors. And some of them in there for misdemeanors and been there for years. And were losing their minds in there and going crazy and all that. Right? But anyhow, the prison broke down. You know, a big prison break. Over 4,000 of them escaped. Um, according to how the media would put it, it's 4,000 dangerous people were now on the streets. So these children would become victims of rape and become victims of exploitation and so on and so forth. So we had to get them up out of there quickly. In fact, he disclosed that they've been sleeping very peacefully since they've arrived in Jamaica two weeks ago. It's an adjustment for them, as anyone would imagine. So I'm sure that it will take some time before they really start to feel like they are at home. But the best I can say is that they are comfortable or they are getting comfortable. And I must say that the children and the staff, they've been sleeping very well, very comfortable. They're not making noises. They're not getting up frightened. And they keep on sleeping throughout the night now. And we have caregivers who actually monitor them in shifts while they sleep throughout the night. And they sleep very peacefully, is what they've said sharing that the children's remark about being able to go to bed without hearing gunshots is a part that hits them very hard, right? And they're being housed at a newly built 
Ephesus village at Jacob's Ladder in Montague, St. Anne. Mustard Seed Communities, Jamaica, and Haitian Children signed an MOU for the former to provide accommodation for the children and for their caregivers. The arrangement is initially for two years, and funding will be provided by Haiti Children's various established donors. So in case you're wondering where the money is coming from, because a lot of people were saying in Jamaica were saying, oh, so they can't find money to take care of the Haitian picnic them. But what happened to with Jamaican children them who's been suffering for the longest? They're saying that this was a joint effort deal between Haiti and Jamaica. And the monies that will take care of the arrangements and take care of the children and their accommodation, it is actually a two-year, initially, two-year deal. And the funding will be provided by the Haitian children's various established donors. So they have their donors. Since the agreement is a temporary one, Augustine disclosed that there are no plans to integrate the children into Jamaica's system. Since the agreement is a temporary one, because that was my, and a lot of us were thinking that, where are these Haitian children going to go? Are they going to be assimilated into our culture? Will they be going into programs mixing with Jamaican children and become Jamaicans eventually? And they're saying, no, this is a temporary agreement. So it looks like the end goal is to get them back to Haiti one day. They just have them out of Haiti for now until Haiti gets stabilized. The arrangement we have with the children home from Haiti is that we would keep them temporarily. And hopefully, at some point, things will get better. And then they can go back to Haiti. That's how far the discussion has gone. We don't know what tomorrow or the next couple of years will bring. But the present arrangement is a temporary one. So there is no discussion about adoptions, about getting them citizenship for Jamaica, about integrating any of them into the Jamaican system or anything like that, right? I guess that will put some Jamaicans' mind at ease because, you know, some of the comments weren't too nice. I won't even uh, go over those not nice comments. Some of them weren't too nice at all. But rightfully so, Jamaicans were concerned that, you know, we have our kids here who's been needing help forever since them born. So what go on? Only just taking them and them get everything so? Well, not quite the case, right? We're not funding it, and it's a temporary agreement, and there is no talks of adoption, citizenship, or integrating them into Jamaican society. The goal is to have Haiti settle down, and they will be returned back to their homeland. There are some doctors here on the island who have offered their services to us. So after a two-week quarantine period that is being monitored by the Ministry of Health, we would be on our own. And that's where some of the private doctors would come in to offer their services to us, doctors and dentists and so on, to check on the kids. So we will be reaching out to them at some point. So they didn't just come in and went straight into business. They came in. They had to be quarantined. They had to be checked out medically and so on and so forth. And then after that, they're saying that there are doctors on the island. You know, a lot of doctors normally do this anyways. You, you, you go into that profession because the health field, doctors, nurses, so on. So you go into the healthcare profession because it's something you love to do. And when you see stuff like this, a lot of them want to give back anyways. So on my time off, maybe I'll go over there and see where they need some help at and where I can jump in and give them some help, you know, and that's that. What we're looking at immediately, and we have been getting donations locally as well for our basic things, like any form of food items, rice, flour, oil, sugar, milk, toilet paper, toothpaste, diapers. Those are like the basic supplies that the children would need from a day-to-day -day basis, and that is what we have been reaching out to get, and that's what we've been getting. 
pretty much. Individuals who are interested in donating anything could call this phone number right here. 876-618-1537. Or you can go to jamaicamustardseed.com or info jamaica at mustardseed.com. 876-618-1537. According to the UN, at least 1,554 people have been reported killed up to March 22nd, and another 826 have been injured in Haiti uh, as a result of the war and factions fighting that's been going on there. So the children are in a safe place is a good news. The children are... Uh, assimilating, they are feeling comfortable, they're sleeping through the night, they're quarantined, they're being monitored, medically checked out, and they're getting the help that they need. It's all good all around, right? With that, we'll leave this right here for today. Um, manners and respect to everybody tuning in. Thank you for being here. And God spare my life. I will catch you tomorrow morning right here on Morning Thoughts. Big up on yourself. Manners and respect again. One love. I'm out. Peace.